5.2, solving quadratic equations by factoring. So, Boys and girls, go back to your studies. Believe me, nothing in life is free. Binomials are two terms, okay? Um, like an X and a 3, all right? Those are two terms, an X and a negative 5. Holy alphabet. Trinomials have three terms, so like X squared, and then a 3X, and then a 1. Those are three terms, right? An X squared is a term, a negative 4X is a term, and a 6 is a term as well. <clears throat> Factoring. Basically, uh, make sure you write this down because this is very important and it's very crucial and it'll help you throughout the entire rest of Algebra 2. If you see a quadratic and you see this, this factoring type will help you out drastically. So what this means is, take a look at that, what two numbers multiply to give you uh, A and C. Okay, so what two numbers multiply to give you that that will add to give you B. Okay, so normally I set up this little X method. So what multiplies to give you A and C that will also add to give you B, basically, is what we're saying. And you plug those in in parentheses just like we have shown up above with an X starting it and a number in the back. And no problem here. We'll show you with some examples. So what you need to do is you take a look at that. 1 times negative 28 is negative 28. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give you negative 28. That will add to give you negative 12. Well, we sit there and I'm thinking through here. Thinking of multiples, negative 28 years, 7 and 4, right? There's, um, you know, nothing else really crossed my except for 2 and 14, right? So if I made it a negative 14 and a positive 2, right? Negative 14 times positive 2 is negative 28. Negative 14 uh, plus 2 is negative 12. So what that means is I start each of these with an x. And I take whatever this is, which is right here, to minus 14. I plug that in there. I take whatever this is, which is a positive 2, and I plug it in right there, and there's the, the equation factored. And this factoring will help us out drastically on how to solve each of these. Holy fruit salad. All right, so example 2, um, we have that x formed, and basically here's what we're going to do. You take whatever that is, which is 30, because 3 times 10 is 30, what multiplies to give you 30. And what adds to give you negative 17. So when I'm sitting here and I'm trying to think about it, mm, going with, um, let's see here, uh, let's see, it gets two negatives. Ah, negative 15 and negative 2, right? Negative 15 times negative 2 is positive 30. Negative 15 plus negative 2 is negative 17, so negative 15 works. But since there is a number in the front of the x, all right, you cannot put it into two factors yet. What you need to do here is we need to rewrite this as something expanded. You see that? Um, because there's a number out in front, notice how I rewrote this with the 3x squared there, the 10 there, and I basically separated 17x into 15 and 2. You see that? Negative 15, negative 2. The reason why I separated it is we can do a concept called factoring by, by grouping. I'm going to try to factor um, these items. I'm going to try to factor each item. And if I look at this one, they both actually have something in common. right? I could take an x out of both of these, right? because they both have an x in common, and a 3. If I divide each of those by 3, and I divide each of those by an x, I can take a 3x out, which means an x is left over, and a negative 5. Over here, if I take a negative 2 out of both of those, right? I have an x and a negative 5 left over. The key to factoring by grouping is making sure that these two items are exactly the same. See how these two items are exactly the same? You need to make sure they're the same. So then when you factor by grouping, you take whatever item is out in front, and you get a 3x minus 2, and whatever item is in the end, you combine together to get an x minus 5. So there are your factors for problem with a number out in front. So special factoring patterns, difference of two cubes or two squares. Basically you have an A plus B and an A minus B. So whatever the first item is squared, and if the second item is squared with a minus sign in the middle, you can basically just separate those two quickly. And by that I mean, is there something squared that gives you nine? Well certainly, right? Three squared. So instead of sitting there and trying to factor that, 
I can do x plus 3 and x minus 3 as my two factors according to that rule. Perfect square trinomial. If I have an a squared and a b squared to a b, what I can do there is I can rewrite that as a plus b squared. So what that means is I notice that this is squared. I also notice that 36 I can rewrite as something squared, 6 squared, right? So when I have that, where I have to sit here and say, well, that's 6. Can I rewrite that as 2 times something? Well, yep, 2 times 6 works. So the point I'm getting at is since I can rewrite that, I know what my a is, that's x. I know what my b is, that's 6. So I can actually rewrite that as x plus 6 squared. Okay. Uh, perfect square trinomials. It also works with subtraction. I can have a minus b squared, and the reason I know it's subtraction is because this is subtraction. So what I'm saying here, I go, oh, okay, well the first line's in x, that's squared. Can I rewrite 16 as something squared? You got it. I can write it as 4 squared. 4 times a negative 2, will that give me negative 8? You betcha. Since it does, I know that this is the first term. I know that this is the last term. This is my a, this is my b, and I just put a subtraction sign in the middle and square it. Holy Las Vegas. So when I come back here, we'll try to finish up with factoring, um, and we will do that with example 3 and try to finish up here 5.2.